We were in opposition to the decision to go to war, but after the war happened, it was clear that you could not sit and look. There would be a breeding ground for terrorism or a new collapsed or failed state named Iraq. Joschka Fischer, German Foreign Minister, 1998 to 2005. Welcome back to Inside Iraq. We are discussing the European perspective on Iraq with Alistair Campbell, Eric Rouleau, and Henning Rieke. Henning Rieke, is it fair to summarize the uh, European position vis-a-vis -vis the Americans by quoting the following, that Americans are from Mars and Europeans are from Venus, meaning the European, first and foremost, they, they go through diplomacy, sanctions, engagement, perhaps disengagement, while the Americans they shoot first and they ask questions later. The Americans are somehow puzzled by Europeans, you know, trying to go through the lengthy route as opposed to the quick route. Uh, I think you're right. It's a very catchy way of, of describing the diff differences between the, um, the Europeans always in, in love with norms and rules and the Americans who use military force in, 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 if it is an effective tool and, and leads to a quick outcome. But in the same time, the Europeans are not non-militaristic. There are, there are many military operations where the Europeans take part. Even the EU is, is engaged. And so um, what, is, what is most important that the EU wants to have, uh, or the Europeans wants to ha want to have um, a, a clear strategy and idea how a war or an operation would go and how one would exit the, the theater and the conflict. And, and this is the reason why many Europeans didn't go with the Americans at, uh, at the outset of the war. But um, the, the quote of, of our Foreign Minister Fischer is absolutely right. You cannot sim simply sit back and say, no, this is the Americans' problem and doesn't affect us. Because um, the implications by the Iraq war and the, and the complicated post-war uh, situation um, affect directly European security. So the, the German uh, way of, of, of like standing back and saying, we don't want to have any soldiers in Iraq after the war, uh, was problematic in my view. We should have not prohib prohibited, for instance, NATO of w working in Iraq uh, for uh, the education and the training of the Iraqi security forces. Uh, we shouldn't have prohibited that. And so, so this is a very pro problematic uh, strategy of the Germans that should be revised. Eric Rouleau, you are not only a student of history, but you are a scholar even uh, in the United States. You lecture there a lot. A new president is coming to power on Jan January 20th. From what you know and from what we have seen over the past five years, is there a convergence now between the European perspective and the American perspective under the Obama administration? We can be hopeful about this. Uh, Mr. Obama, as you probably know, is very popular in Europe. Uh, one of the reasons is because he is not for the use of force. He wants to deal with problems in a peaceful manner, uh, reaching the same results or the same objectives Mr. Bush wanted, but without using force. And this is something which the Europeans would uh, agree totally with him. The point now is that is Mr. Obama free to do what he wants? This is a big question. I'm sure Mr. Obama wants to deal with Iraq and get rid and, and withdraw American troops as soon as possible. I'm sure of that. But he is submitted to many pressures. Uh, the pressure, first of all, of his own administration. The Pentagon is not so enthusiastic about leaving Iraq. Some, some generals in the Pentagon want, as a matter of fact, they want to have permanent bases in Iraq. Uh, you have also pressures coming from the State Department, with Mrs. Hillary Clinton, uh, Clinton at, the, at the head of the, of the State Department, and the people around her who are not as decided as Obama to withdraw the troops very quickly. Then you have. Uh, it, it might sound strange to you. You might have some pressures from the Iraqi government itself, because the Iraqi government wants to survive, which is very natural. And if they feel, if this government feels that maintaining American troops even without, uh, beyond the date which has been fixed by the security pact which they have signed, they will exercise pressure on the American administration not to withdraw the troops. So we don't know exactly how Mr. Obama will solve all this. I guess that will become very clear be very perhaps careful. after a, a, about uh, six months uh, from the Obama administration. Meanwhile, I was struck by an article in The Guardian by the uh, British Foreign Secretary David Miliband saying that the war on terror 
has been nothing but a disaster. Does that mean somehow the, Europe, the British are shifting towards the Obama concept of fighting terror? I think, to be honest, Britain has always been very uncomfortable with the concept of a war on terror, a war against an abstract noun, as people said. And I think it was more Tony Blair sort of snuggling up to the Americans, making them feel a bit uh, warm and fuzzy, that he followed them there. I don't think we've ever really been happy with the concept at all. And certainly, I think Dave Miliband's ad admission is something we've been thinking for a long time, for the last several years, that actually the war on terror has created more problems than it's solved. And certainly, um, I, I, I think it's on the right track. That we must have strong diplomacy or smart diplomacy, as Hillary Clinton has been talking about, as opposed to use of military force. But you always need that military force in the background to support it. I'd like to pick up a point that, that uh, Professor Rika was saying about the Germans helping with the reconstruction and training in Iraq. I think one of the real legacies of the British um, five or six years in Iraq has been uh, the training of the 14 Division, 10 Division, also the military college, the staff college, the defence college, all the things which really will give part of the nation building on the security side to the Iraqis and that be enduring and lasting and I hope will be remembered longer than some of the other aspects of the intervention which weren't quite so, quite so memorable. Professor Rico, would you like to comment? I would like to point out how, how important this, this training and education aspect is. And this is something that the EU is actually doing. The EU has a large mission running, the um, rule of law mission, in training and, and educating uh, legal experts uh, for the uh, judiciary, for the penitentiary system and for the police. With um, like 2,000 people since 2005 uh, having been trained with 80 courses running until June this year and probably to be extended. This is one of the um, EU contributions to the, to the security and stability in Iraq. Uh, it should be, though, done more inside Iraq and not outside in the EU members' countries. I think physically the, the European countries should, should get engaged much more as a form of a confidence-building measure inside Iraq. Ir Iraq. Since we are talking about entrance and influence, Eric Rillo, in the 70s and the 80s, uh, France made a, a tremendous inroad into Iraq. Uh, French was added as a second language in secondary and high school. Uh, pretty much uh, a big segment of the Iraqi Air Force was made out of the Mirage. And French contractors, they did tremendous business in Iraq. Now, with uh, American influence pretty much dominant in Iraq, would you say the French have a chance to come back and influence events on the ground? Uh, that's a very good question. I don't uh, know. Uh, it de all depends what kind of government you have in Iraq. At this point, uh, this government hasn't shown any, uh, has not expressed any wish to strengthen its relation with France or with, the, or with the European countries. Um, it is still very much under American influence. But again, you never know, because uh, Americans in Iraq, we should not forget, are quite unpopular in the population. Uh, I'm not sure that the population is satisfied with the recent treaty which has been signed between Iraq and the United States. There are sub several question marks about that security pact. So uh, it's very difficult. I don't think, anyway, to answer your question, I don't think the French can ever come back to the situation, the privileged situation they had under Saddam Hussein. This is over. The French would not be as influential, uh, as active as they were uh, 20 years ago. Uh, President Bush reluctantly, but after five years, pretty much he admitted made tremendous mistakes even in Iraq while the British Prime Minister Tony Blair today, to this day, he never apologized and he always thought that he was correct in the first place. Well, I think that's a question I have to ask Mr. Blair r rather than me. I think I've outlined some of the errors that I think he made. What I would like to say on the European side is I think there's an opportunity now for European nations to invest in Iraq, whether they want to or not, and to offer on good terms. Um, for example, they, they can go into oil companies, Total, BP, Shell, very good opportunities uh, to get into Iraq and try and raise the standard of, of the oil and the production there from the, the 1.8 million barrels per day up to 4.1 million barrels per day, which, which Shahrastani wants at the moment. So it's a real opportunity now for Europe to forget the past, get together and, make, and help Iraq build its nation again, get the economy going, get jobs going, and get, get the political process moving once more. Director of Russia, Qatar, Alistair Campbell. Former French ambassador to Tunisia and Middle East expert Eric Rouleau. Professor Henning Rieke from the Council on Foreign Relations. Gentlemen, thank you for being guests on Inside Iraq.
to access the show and to send us your comments, please go to aljazeera.net forward slash English. We have reached the end of this show. Join me next week when we take another look inside Iraq. Until then, goodbye.